Ladies and gentlemen, the track is open for tourist riding. Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. And as you guessed it, we are here at the Norch Cliff, also known as the Nurburgring, on the famous YouTube corner. Um, at the moment, it is a track day. Um, it's a private one because this is a Monday um, and during the day it is rented out, so you can't go on there. Tourist and fan, or the, the bit where tourists can drive, starts about five o'clock, so we'll definitely get a lap in later. Um, but I wanted to show you basically our whole trip. I wanted to show you things like um, things to think about, prepare, um, costing, what you can do when you're here, and all that other great stuff. And look. Of course, all the viewing there is probably nearly 350 foot. Oh no, what am I talking about? There's a million pounds worth of supercars there. But yeah, this is, there's always something to do. There is something to do everywhere. Um, we'll start with preparation. Let's take a walk to the car. So. Preparation is key because you're doing, let's say, a thousand miles. Because from where we are, how many miles was it, Lou? It's got to be six or seven hundred, isn't it? Six or seven hundred each way, and then of course you're going to be bombing it round there and all the back roads. Now, it's always worth doing your lights, your levels. If you just had a service, ideal, not crucial, but you want to make sure that everything is topped up and good. Make sure you've got a good set of tyres. I always recommend carrying a full-size spare and. No truer did we get a puncture, well, a big hole in the sidewall, going to a flipping restaurant. So it wasn't even out on the ring, it was actually at a restaurant, and there's no way you could go round the track with a space saver. Um, at the weekends here, most things shut. So on a Sunday, you, you get nothing. So if you had a blowout, and obviously being a V6, it doesn't have a spare, you'd be stuffed. So prep is key. Um, basic hand tools, I would definitely recommend bringing one of those, you know, like all-in-one tool kits where you have some, some Torx bits, some sockets, just to get you out of trouble. Um, but besides that, also a tyre pressure gauge or like an inflator, just because you want to be checking your pressures. If you're banging around there, your tyres are going to get really hot and they may need adjusting. Last thing you want to do is damage your tyres. Uh, but preparation-wise, not too bad. Uh, I'd also recommend coming in a group. We came 22 strong, not always uh, necessary. But if there's a few of you, at least if one of you has a problem, you can leave your car, go somewhere, get some bits, or there's more heads to look at a problem. It's always helpful. Um, other things to consider is if you're driving this here and intend to drive it home again, you've got to be mindful when out there, because the last thing you want to do is get a bit, bit over keen, hit the barrier, damage your wheel, and then you're not going to get home. The AA won't recover you because that's classed as an accident, not a breakdown. The Nurburgring actually take notification of your like your registration plate and all that kind of stuff, so it logs it. So there's no way you'll be able to just say, oh yeah, it just it broke while I was driving along. Um, so do be mindful about that. But you've come here to have a great time, and we will show you exactly what that is. Let's uh, let's get on to what you can do here. Now on to viewing points. So you, obviously, of course, you want to you're going to want to do some laps yourself, but you may also want to view some. And if you've watched YouTube videos, you know there is loads of places to do that. Now some will have car parks where you can just drive straight up, park across the road, walk across, and then you're onto a viewing point like here. Um, and this is the little jump. They'll come down this straight and there's a little jump where they lift before going absolutely tearing around this corner. Um, and there is viewing areas. I mean, I don't know how well you can see it, but down there you can walk all the way along and just stand all the way down there. Um, and then there's these lovely little viewing windows where if you want to do a little bit of filming or a little bit of YouTubing, you can get some nice videos without the fence in it, which is always good. Um, but if you find out, download a map, find the corners you want to go and look at, say like the carousel or something like that, you can then jump on Google and it will give you a list of how to get there. Some are like the carousel, I think is like a 20, 25 minute walk. 
Um, so definitely pack some water if you're going in the summer. Because it, is, it is hot today. We're actually in the shade. Also bring with you a folding chair because it will come in very handy. If you're going to be sitting there for a few hours, it gets quite tedious after a while. But yeah, corners, find the name of the corners you want to go and look at. Jump online and you can get your directions. Quite a lot of them are very well documented. Um, and you can see some wicked stuff. Unfortunately, there's been a yellow flag, so there's not actually coming uh, any cars around at the moment, but I will, of course, show you some clips that we got earlier on in the day. ready to do some laps around the Nürburgring, you've geared yourself up for it, you've talked yourself into it, you've played a bit of Xbox and you're ready. The only thing that you need to do that stops you from getting on that ring is going to that ticket office and getting one of these little green cards here that I have in my wallet. This green, green hell card is all you need. You can keep this card, it costs you 30 euros a lap, so you can go in there and from 30 euros up to whatever you want to do, a thousand, whatever, um, 30 euros a lap, they top this up and then all you do is we'll go over there now and I'll show you you got to drive over to the barrier tap it as if you're going into a toll road the barrier lifts and that is it I tell you what let's jump to the car so you think you're going this is reasonably quicker then <laughs> it's like and GTR and you think right now Once you've finished your laps and you want to take a break and do something else, there is always something to do here. Whether that's just standing by the roundabout and watching all the cars getting on the track, the track has literally just opened and quite a few people have got on, but there's always people coming out of the car park ready to do some more laps. So apart from that, you've obviously got spectating. There's a museum, which is really good, has a load of really old prestige race cars, cars that have been in real races. You've got the karting, which we did, which was brilliant fun. There's electric and petrol. Um, you have tobogganing, which for three euros 50 is probably the most fun you'll have. <laughs> I didn't have a choice, I just slammed you. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Give it the handrail, push, go on. There's definitely benefits to being a fat lad. Um, you've got car park walks. Now I would recommend this one personally because there is a prether of cars, especially at the weekends. 
Um, the weekends are usually busier and in the evenings where it's Touristafan. There is stuff from brand new supercars to 205 GTIs with special engines, turbos, all sorts of mad stuff. Things you probably haven't seen in 30 years. There was an Alpha Sud here yesterday and they were doing laps. They were having a lovely time. Um, so go and have a look around the car park. Now this car park is the, the main one. It's obviously the roundabout where everyone gets on uh, the ring there. Here there is a car park and then behind the ticket office there, there is a massive gravel car park which is usually full to the brim with cars. Just a constant flow of cars and bikes getting on here. Um, you've also got things like laps, laps and more laps. <laughs> Um, and that includes also doing a ring taxi. Now, ring taxis range from, depending on how many of you are doing it, so the i30N at the moment, which was the most fun that we had because the guy was literally sideways the whole time. Um, that was like 46 euros a head for a lap, which is 30 euros a lap plus fuel in your own car. So you just get taken around by a race driver in half the time and it costs about the same. So. Really recommended. Um, you can go in the M5, which works out about 80 or 90 euros ahead. And then of course, if you really, really want to, you can go out in something like a GT3 RS, McLaren or similar, and that's gonna set you back three or 400 euros, but probably the fastest car you'll ever be in and then getting absolutely hammered around by a professional race driver. So definitely worthwhile, although you may not want to eat two hours before or two hours afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course there is other things to do as well like um, getting petrol you're going to do that quite a bit um, if you're hammering it around the ring you're likely to get about four or five laps per tank um, so definitely factor that one in when costing it up that moves us nicely on to my next point which was costings now to get over here um, was actually reasonably cheap um, you can do it for a couple of hundred pounds it's just the petrol um, the Accommodation approximately, if you go on to say booking.com, you can get for about 30 or 40 pounds per person per night. Self catering, which I think is cheap. Um, the food here is cheap and there is plenty of it. Um, you've also got the ferry or the train. The train is quicker, the ferry is cheaper. It's horses for courses. The ferry you can get from about 140, 150 pounds both ways. The train is about 250. But if there's a couple of you, I'd always recommend if you can come in pairs, it's more exciting, you get to share the bill. You're looking at a couple of hundred quid each, four nights, everyone's happy. And then it's just a case of sorting out petrol and food. And of course, laps, laps and more laps. So some of the must go places, of course, are the YouTube corners, the places that you see day in, day out when you search Nürburgring videos. This one here is a perfect example. There's a little jump behind you there. If Louis just gives you a little pan around. And if there's a car coming right now, luckily, they get a little bit of air as they go round this corner. And it's quite a fast paced corner. There's plenty of view and area. You can actually go up onto the bend and there's some cutouts as well. There is Porsches and Ferraris and supercars just absolutely hacking past. There's an ISF coming right, oh, is it ISF? M6 and a few others coming past. Now, the other places you wanna go are the giant Nürburgring sign. And if you have ever seen an Instagram picture, that big Nürburgring sign where the go-karting is and the boulevard and all the other stuff, uh, the race simulator we went on earlier, you can just pull up outside. Just a note that they may move you on quite quickly. So do be prepared to just sort of park up, jump out, couple of snaps, ready to go again. Um, of course, get everyone ready if you're gonna big do, do a big group one. If you go there in the evening, they're not as quick to move you on, so a little bit better. Um, should you want to, I'm not going to promote it, but there is certain places that you can walk down onto, onto the actual track itself at night. If you have a look around now, if Louis pans you around, you can see that people have graffitied the track. You could also get a nice team photo, get a picture of all of you under, say, a bridge or a gantry. Um, that is one thing to maybe have a look at. You might see other people doing it. You may get in trouble. I'm not promoting it, but that is something you could do. Ah, oh, places to eat. Now, there is a predator of places to eat. One of the ones in which we're actually going to tonight is the Steak on the Stone, Piston Klaus, um, where you actually cook your own dinner. Um, but it's lovely. Uh, there's also the Bistro, which is in Adenau, and there's bakeries and a few. Uh, Pinocchio's Pizza is amazing. Uh, go for the XXL, it's like 28 inches round and will feed about four people, and it's about 20 quid. Um, and they are some of the must-go-to places.
So that concludes our trip to the Nürburgring. I hope you enjoyed watching it. We thoroughly enjoyed living it. And if you wanted to know any more details about the trip, where we stayed and all that kind of good stuff, then just you know where to find me. Um, I will be planning a trip next year in which I'll be putting all the details up in advance. So if anyone would like to come along, you make your own bookings, but I will tell you where I'm going to be on what dates and we'll try and get a big gathering together. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.